folks here that still want to help out. Yeah. 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 Make sure everything yeah. runs smooth. Yeah. And then uh, it is springtime. Anybody know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I, I'm not too glad about is this Sunday school list that I've got. Uh, in the springtime, it seems like we've got this kind of work going on. Honey, honey, do this and honey, do that. Um, yeah, honey, go. You know what I'm going to do? I don't want to be a pastor. It's about a mile long. Thank you for growing every year. year. <laughs> we've, been, we've been cleaning the house and doing some repairs, and uh, we had our deck out there that needed some uh, major repairs, so we went and. Uh, figured out what we needed to buy and purchase, and I sit down and kind of look at things and examine uh, what parts of the house needed uh, replacing, you know, good thing, the whole thing ain't falling in, as Helen <laughs> says sometimes, but uh, we did need to replace some lumber and some facer board and things like that. You know, Uncle Doug, I got to thinking about that when we did that. I was looking at myself as a Christian. Sometimes we need to examine ourselves. Hey, Amen. Sometimes the facer yeah. boards are a little loose. Yeah. Sometimes we need to repair some of the breaches and hey, walk with the Lord. Tonight's message is on self-examination. We need to examine ourselves. Yeah. Second Corinthians 13 and 5 says this. Are you there? Amen. 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 Says, examine yourselves whether you be walked church in the faith. In the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be walked church? Reprobate. Reprobate. What is a reprobate? A reprobate is a depraved, wicked person. Right. One that almost cannot be saved. I, I never really cast somebody off to the extent of, because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would call on Him should be saved. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not at all casting someone beyond the realm of possibility of being saved. But these wicked people out here, you know, sometimes as Christians, uh, we act like reprobates. Amen. We don't really get it. We don't get into the form and fashions of it. Uh, and, and, looking at how important it is to do the things that God wants us to do. Uh, like I said, when we examine ourselves, we find flaws, we find things that need repairing. Go ahead. You know, and, and, and how do we repair those things? Well, we seek God's wisdom, we read God's word, we listen to God's preaching, we, we fellowship with God's people, and in doing that, uh, I think that we find some of the things that we need work on in our lives. And I'm not here pointing the finger at anyone. I'm here actually to tell you that I've been examining myself. You know, the things that I need to do to get stronger uh, and, and be a better Christian. If the pastor calls on me to preach, I want to be Brother Tim in a position that I can preach the gospel. I want to be in a position to where I can teach uh, the gospel. I want to be in a, a position to where if somebody calls that I can pray for them. Amen. You know, and, and, and if things are falling apart in my Christian life, I can't do these things. Right. I can't lead our home if I'm falling apart at the seams. Wow. So I try my very best, and in, in, in doing that, I try to read every day. I try to pray every day. I try to seek God every day and, and ask Him, what do you want me to do? What can I do to be better for you, Lord? You know, the world is trying to allure us each and every day. The, the world's got so many things that can take us away from God. And it's so easy to get caught up in these things. Even as a Christian, we get caught up in the things that, of the world. Amen. And we've got to be careful. It's all right, you know, we are not going to live in a shell. We're not like ostriches once we get saved. We're not going to bury our head in the sand. We've got to go down to Walmart. Don't they have everything? Amen. No, I'm just kidding. We can go somewhere else. But what I'm saying is you've got to go out in the world. I've got to go out and buy gasoline for the car. I've got to go out and work. I've got to do things that I need to do. But I don't have to get caught up in the things of the world. Examine yourself, the Bible's telling us. Whether we be in the faith. Are you in the faith tonight? Amen. What does it mean when Paul writes to the church of Corinth and yeah. says, Examine yourself whether you're in the faith or not. Are you truly saved? Right? Yeah. Are you really born again? We can't, we can't say that we love God and God lives in us and don't have an interest in the church. We can't right. say that God is in us and we don't have an interest in reading our Bibles or praying. We've got to have go. God as the Amen. number one thing Amen. in our lives. Amen. Good, brother. Now, in self-examination, let's look at what the Bible tells us. We must self-examine ourselves with diligence. And what is diligence? It's a constant and earnest effort to accomplish what is undertaken. Yeah. What have we undertaken here as Christians? We've undertaken one of the greatest causes 
in the history of mankind, and that's carrying the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ has died for our sins, and we know that Easter is fast approaching. We have Passion Week, Palm Sunday, and then we have Easter. That's right. And it's one of the great events on the Christian calendar. It's great fellowship here at Northside Baptist Church when we have our uh, breakfast and we get to hear that wonderful priest message and we get the fellowship. That's a wonderful time on the Christian calendar. Jesus Christ did not die in vain. Amen. He died that right. we could have life and life more abundantly. He died that we could be set free from the bodies of sin, that we would live no more in sin, but rather have a goal in our life. Not that we want to get to heaven. That's been sealed by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But that we may have a better life. And that we may be a help to those in need. Brother Tim, I want to help people. I don't want to hinder them. I don't want to keep them out of church. I want them to come to church. And if I find that I'm keeping people out of church, I need to examine myself and find out what the problem is in my life. Amen. For a couple of years, God was a blessing us. No matter what I did, Brother Jim, it seemed like the business was falling off. My prayers were just hitting the ceiling. We weren't getting nowhere. I had to examine my life. I had to find out what it is that you're doing for the reason that God's not blessing you. Mom. Let's turn in our lives, uh, let's turn in our Bibles over to Psalm 77 and 6. Psalms 77 and 6. And my life was, you know, wasn't in a complete shambles, but there was something I knew that was keeping me from growing in the Lord. Psalm 77 and 6. So I had to examine myself with diligence, with a constant and earnest effort to accomplish what was undertaken. If God's not blessing us, if God's not blessing you, you need to find out why. Amen. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know if you're behind the wheel of a car if one of the plugs is misfiring. Right. You can feel it. If something's misfiring in your life, if something's not quite right, you know that you're not running efficiently. Are you there? Amen. What does it say in Psalm 77 and 6, church? I call to what? Remember, it's my song in the night. I. You see, the psalmist is not blaming people. He's not pointing his finger, right. saying, you know what? That old preacher is standing in the way of me having happiness as a Christian. He go? says, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. Right. But you see, he's watching out for our soul. Amen. He's preaching what's needful in our life that we can examine ourselves even further and find out how we can get on track for God. Amen. Amen. But so many people blame the man of God, so many people blame the church, but yet. They don't take the blame on themselves. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Jim, I could have blamed everybody around me. But when I examined myself, I found out I was to blame. Yeah. I needed to work Amen. on my walk. Amen. I call to remember, as the song that says, my song in the night, communion with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. The spirit was making diligent search for those things that was keeping him from being a good Christian Amen. soldier for the Lord. Yeah, man. It's not daddy's fault. It's not mama's fault. It's not my brother or it's not my sister, but it's me. Oh, Lord, when I come to this altar, I stand in the need of prayer. Amen. Amen. But you're selfish if you want prayer for yourself. No, I'm not. I'm doing what the Bible teaches. Amen. What the there Bible has preached to me. I must say, God, it's me. It's me, it's me, it's me. I need help. I need prayer. I need you to touch me and heal me and help me and set me upon that solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So with diligence, we must examine ourselves, church, and in doing this, guess what? The blessings of God can return to our life. And when the blessings of God return to us, then in turn we can bless others. Right. What do you think you do with the 10% that you give to the church? What do you think that 10% does? Do you think that goes into the pastor's pocket? No! You give that 10% that God's word can be preached. Amen. That we can keep this church going. Amen. 
How are you guys? Nothing worse than going to a church and seeing the grass grown up, the grave markers knocked over, right. the paint peeling, Come on, bro. the carpet in ruins. That shows that people are slothful. Right. Right. People aren't seeking yeah, God. Right. They're seeking yeah. pleasure instead. I've been to churches to where I wondered, why is God's house like this? Does nobody care for what God blessed him with? Now look at that, and then I look at my own life. And I see sometimes turmoil, and I see sometimes trouble, and I say, Lance, do you not care what God's blessed you with? No. You, you've been called, Brother Tim, we've been called to preach. And we know the Word just about as good as anybody else. And when we preach, we're not just preaching to the congregation, are we, Brother Tim? That's right. We're preaching to ourselves. Exactly. Pastor, when you preach, you're not preaching just to the congregation. Right. When you preach from the Bible, you are trying to help the children of God. And also, you're preaching to yourself. Man. Form one thing and form more form thing. Yes, sir. Very good. So when we examine ourselves, church, we must do it with diligence. Let's turn over to Lamentations 3 and 40. Lamentations 3 and 40. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Man, do you think that Jeremiah basked in the fact that God chose him to tell the people of Israel that they were going to be carried away captive. You know, Jeremiah must have struggled with the pastor. He must have struggled with it. And as a matter of fact, they tried to take Jeremiah's life on many occasions because he was warning them, you're going to be carried away captive because of your sin. Man. <clears throat> it's Lamentations 3 and 4. Lamentations 3 and 40. Are you there? Say Lamb. Brother Tim Bristol, would you please read that, sir? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Amen. Brother Tim, when you read that, what do you think about that? Can you expand, expand just a little bit on that, brother, please? Well, when I see that, it wants me to search myself. Yes, sir. Personal. Amen, brother. Thank you, brother. Let us, us, the family of God, the Amen. children of God. And he said that that was singular as well. Let us, singular. It starts with you. Right. It starts with me. Right. And try our way. And turn again to the Lord. See, Jeremiah was trying to warn him, turn back to God. Turn Amen. back to God. God's merciful. God loves you. You're his children. You're his chosen people. We know this in the Old Testament that Israel was God's chosen people and Israel was his children. And God loved Israel and he delivered them many, many times in the book of Judges and when Saul was king from the Philistines and when David was king from the Moabites and all the, all the countries that would come against him in battle, God delivered them time and time again. How many times, if you really think about it as a Christian, how many times has God delivered you? Yeah. Out of the hand of the valley. How many times has God delivered you out of the hand of the the enemy had put sights on you. The enemy had drawn his mark. He wanted to take you down. And you were, you were at despair's edge. You didn't know what to do. But throw up your hands and say, God, it's me again. Could you please help me one more time? And the great thing about the living God is that he takes care of all your problems. You know what he says to bring your burdens and lay them upon him? Yeah. I can lay my burdens upon God and he'll take care of those. Yeah. I can take my worries yeah, and lay them upon God and he'll yeah, take my worries. Yeah. I don't have to lay in bed at night and lose my sleep because I'm a child of God. Man. I'm a child of the King. Yeah. I've got an enemy. I've got an adversary. He's drawn a plague. He's drawn a target upon me and he wants to take me out. Amen. But you know what? I'm smart enough to know God can take care of him. Amen. Saul and all the men of Israel were afraid of Goliath. And he would come out for 30 days, Brother Tim, is that correct? Over 30 days. And he would challenge Israel and say, send me out a man. Yeah. And we'll fight. And whoever wins that battle between me and your man then that nation will serve the other. If you can beat me, then we'll serve Israel. Yeah. If I beat him, 
then you'll serve the Philistines. Yeah. Amen. 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 Good brother. And this little ruddy youth showed up. Says Jesse sent him with some cheese and some things to take to the captains of his brothers and said, Go see how things are with your brothers. And David wanted to know one thing when he got there. Who's this dog? Yeah. Who's this Philistine? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who's this uncircumcised dog that's defying the army of Israel? Uh -huh. So he talked to Saul and said, Send me. Yeah. I will go. Amen. Not in my own knowledge or my own mind, but in the name of the living God. Absolutely, Amen. brother. Amen. You see, the battle sometimes looks huge and yeah. enormous. The obstacles are many. It almost looks like the end. That's good. But when we focus on God instead of our problems, yeah. one of the things that David was focusing on, I love this hymn, he's just focusing on God. Amen. He said, God, when a bear and a lion came, yeah. he said, one of my little lambs. Uh -huh. He didn't say, I win. You know, he did. He caught the lion by the beard. Yeah. And he took care of that old bear, too. But he said, God give me the strength to go. Right. God gave me the strength to grab that old lion by the beard and to take care of that old man. So he wasn't focusing on the problem. He was focusing on God. Yeah. You see, and through self-examination, that helps us understand that when you have someone that can help us, no matter what the situation is in our life, let us search and cry our ways. Thank you, Brother Ken Bristol. And turn again to the Lord. Not only do we need to examine ourselves with diligence, but there's an advantage if we examine ourselves, we have an advantage. Right. What, is, what does advantage mean? It means to benefit, yeah. gain, or profit. Yeah. What do we gain? How do we benefit by examining ourselves? We find the flaws that's in our life. We profit from God's blessings and promises. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. We have an advantage if we examine ourselves. Right. 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. Uncle Doug, did you bring your glasses, sir? 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. If you brought your glasses, if you'll read that scripture, please. You're ahead of that. I've seen that in your clock. 11 21? 11 31. 31. Yes, sir. Picking on people. I'm not just picking on people. I'm not just teaching or preaching. 
And but I look at Jesus and people wear these things and it says, what would Jesus do? And if they truly believe that, guess who was faithful in the Bible to going to church? Jesus was faithful going to church. What would Jesus do? Jesus would go to church. Jesus would read God's word. Jesus would pray. He's the greatest example we have. Amen. What would Jesus do? Yes, sir. And that's a benefit in the game of profit for us. Pastor, you're exactly right. Amen. Yes, sir. For if we were judged, as Uncle Doug said, ourselves, we should not be judged. Right. That's an advantage. Let's look over in Galatians 6 and 4. Galatians 6 and 4. Galatians 6 and 4. So we know when we examine ourselves, we must be with diligence. And there's an advantage that we have when we examine ourselves. Galatians 6 and 4. And you say, Amen when you're done. Amen. Amen. But let every man what? Prove. Prove his own work, and then shall he have what? Rejoicing, Rejoicing in himself yeah. alone and not in others. Remember, I said a lot of people's joy is being stolen. They're yeah. having it. That's right. What does rejoicing mean? Man, that, that means you're just having a grand old time in the Lord. Amen. You know what? I like that. Pastor, when we get here and we in the, in the choir, and Reed starts leading that choir, and, and we start getting into, you know, we start getting to the spirit, man, we have a good old time. Amen. The choir starts singing, and that really preps the pastor up, and he gets up here and he breaks the bread of life, and we're back there, and we're taking all that in, Brother Tim Bristol, and it's really helping us. It's Amen. really helping us, because when we're out there away from the church, it's time to start examining ourselves. Am I really listening to what the pastor's telling me? Am I really taking it to heart what the preacher's trying to tell me? Are you what the preacher's it? trying to warn me? The preacher's trying to cry against the wolf. You know, I, he's warning me. Am I taking it to heart? It's good. Or, or, or am I just, or is the preacher just up there beating the air? Is he up there just trying to say something just to kind of, you know, just to be saying something? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's much more than that because what the preacher's doing is he's preaching from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's not some, you know, told story or asthma or any other fiction that you may find or part of one romance. It's much more than that. This is the living, breathing Word of God. Amen. In the beginning was what, church? The Word. The Word, the word was with God, and the Word was God. It was, was God. God. Yeah, so He's doing it to watch over us as a flock. Amen. So we must prove our own work. And then, what, church? The advantage we have. We shall have rejoicing. We want to rejoice in the fact that, you know, I've been in myself, I found faults in my life, and I'm going to rectify those faults, and in doing that, I can I lead my family as a head of a household. I can go to church and do my duties without thinking anything other than I'm doing what God wants me to do. Amen. I'm not here to please you tonight, and I'm not saying it ugly, church. I love you. I love each and every one of you. I'm not here to please you tonight. Well, I'm here to please God. That's and if this word of God Amen. is hitting you like it's hitting me, then the altar is open. Amen. Always you come to this altar and you take care of what you need to take care of. And in ending, self-examination through diligence and its advantages, it has a purpose. Right. And that purpose is amendment. Yeah. Amendment. And amendment means a change made by correction Amen. or deletion. We amend our way so God can use us for His glory. Psalms 119 and 59. Psalms 119 and 59 in closing. Psalms 119 and 59. When you read Psalms 119, you've really done some reading, ain't you? Amen. Amen. That's a long, long, long chapter. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. It is. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Let's read it together, church. I thought on my way and turned my feet to walk. That's a new testimony. That's a new testimony. It's God's testimony. Right. What is God's testimony? You ever thought about that? You've got a testimony, don't you? God saved me from being an old sinner, an old wretch. He set me up on the solid rock. The cornerstone which the builders rejected, and that's Jesus Christ. You see, his testimony is that he sent his only begotten son to die for all our sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And you know, thank God for that. You know, you have hope tonight. Think about the person out there that doesn't have hope. They can examine themselves till the cows come home. 
they'll never be able to amend anything in their life. Right. They'll always have a hole in their heart. They'll always have broken dreams. You see, I thought I could do many, many marvelous things as a sinner. But there's nothing I ever can pay to what Jesus did for me. And I thank God for that. I thank God that I've got a great church like we've got. I thank God we've got a great pastor. We've got good friends, uh, loved ones here at the church. And, and you know what? When I examine myself, I thank God and rejoice. Amen. Man, that I'm a Christian and that I can amend anything that's broken because of the promises of Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Shed for my sins, that means past, present, and future. All I've got to do is have faith. Amen. Amen. Amen.